today we're going to learn how to draw the rough scaled snake. I am the snake artist and my mission in life is to get people to appreciate art and wildlife. Time to get wild, time to get arty with the rough scaled snake. A beautiful snake, absolutely gorgeous. Now this video is going to start off pretty easy so you know if you're a beginner you could even start this video uh, but by the end of it it's going to get very very complicated. So don't get too discouraged if you can't get all the way to the end of the video, but if you're an advanced drawer, maybe you can. Maybe you might surprise yourself. Let's go. So we're going to do a bit of a portrait. We're going to do an oval here, like so. We're going to do two lines like this. Then we're going to do sort of almost like a, a bit more than a half circle. So it's going to circle around like this to about there straight line there. Next we're going to do a bit of a curvy line like that and another curvy line like that because we have to put those scales in. It's going to be a tricky scale one. Now, so this is almost like sculpting. You put your clay down and you sculpt bits away. We're going to sculpt a bit away here. The mouth is going to come in here somewhere. So there's a mouth like that. It's the lower jaw is there about almost yeah almost right in the middle of your oval is where we're going to put the eye just like around circle like that now it comes to dividing up the face into facets into little scales now put a line going down like that behind the eye here is a scale there's about three scales here so we've got a scale there then we've got two smaller scales here then not going straight down, it's going a slight angle that way. And from here, another scale going a slight angle that way. Now at the end of the mouth, just sort of do a bracket shape and bring it back to about there. Not to there, but to there. Now, a little line forward like that. Another line like that. Got one scale in front of their eye there. Line down like that. Another line like that. And now we're going to sort of like on a bit of an angle, we're going to put a line there, line there. So you're forming a V there, but you're making sort of a, a weird rectangle trapezius shape here. And line goes there like that. Now here, another circle, not as big as the eye, but another circle. Let me shake that in. Now at the front here, there's a scale which would probably look like that if it was front on. A bit for the tongue to come out, but when we turn it side on, you're just sort of getting a part of it like this. Okay, so that's that there. So a little dip there, for the tongue to come out of, or oh, just like that. Okay, now we are going to have this come out like that. It's going to be a line. If you can sort of like imagine where the nose holes are, both sides. There is a scale there and a scale there. So four sets of scale. So here's the front part here. You're going to see that nice shaped scale there. But on the other side, you're just getting a little bit of it because it's wrapped around. Here, same thing. We've got a nice big scale there and a little bit over there. When we have those four, we have one in the middle and we have eye scales both sides of the eyes. So right in the center. It's all flat and squish, but we have a scale like that, which is in the center. We have one sort of brow scale there, a scale that goes over the brow. And we've got another one on the other side, which is sort of shortened because it's on the other side. Now, one, two, there. From there, we're going all the way back here. And bring it here, there's like two big solar panels there. I might make this scale a little bit bigger. Now, the scale's underneath. First of all, I'm going to shape this a little bit more. Because it's a bit under shadow there. We're going to have a bit of racket there. Here we go, a line like that. You see when you watch these, they don't quite line up, which is pretty cool. Bit of a line there, bit of a line there, a line there. And I'm going to darken in this mouth a bit, make it come up to there. We're going to put a little circle there. We're going to put a circle behind that, which we colour in. 
and we've got the beginnings of the rough scaled snake pretty simple so far at the back here we've got some more scales happening now to get some sort of order to this this is where it gets tricky because what I want to do is I'm going to put a line like this it's going to go all the way around there so watch what I do here so there's a narrow line there and where is it going to go? It's going to have to go to there, so it's going to have to cross over here and get a bit wider when it does. And narrow again. So it gets wide here, then it gets narrow again. And it's the top scale. I don't think I've ever done a demonstration that shows you how to curve around Anyway, this will probably be the easiest way to do this is by making little guidelines as to where you're going to put the scales. Now we're making like a brick wall. Just imagine you're drawing bricks. But this brick wall goes around a corner like this. So with the brick wall, you've got one, then you've got the offset. So in between those, we put another line like this. But you want to make it curve around a bit though. See how I'm making those a little bit slanted? It's like I'm, like I'm making them out of bricks. In fact these ones down here are probably belly scales. Up here, see I'm going to make them slope that way. So you make this brick wall look like it's a little bit rounded. Dan's going to take this corner. Here's the scales right on the back. Now watch this, on the outside these bricks get a bit bigger, on the inside they cluster together like this. Look how close they are. Then they start going out normal again. Now this bit here is tricky. We're going to go in like this and it's going to go into almost nothing. It's just curving with the body. Same thing here, get those bricks happening. And here it crunches up. You may end up shading a bit in here anyway. Now this one here should be much easier. We're drawing this all very gentle, very light, because we're going to go over it with darker. Probably even a pen, I think. So it doesn't really matter how much pencil lines you have here. They all just get erased away. Leave that. More bricks. So just brick the rest of the body like this. Now in between. See how I'm sloping them slightly? Okay, this. I speed up some of these bits. You guys can just pause the video, catch up, and then keep going. These ones going to slope back this way. I even cut that in half. Now what we do, I make some scales sort of linking up here. Each scale, each brick is replaced by a scale. And we sort of make that scale bulge out and then come in a bit like an oval. It should make an interlocking pattern like, oh, like long skinny honeycomb, I suppose. There we go. And we're going to come across an interesting problem soon. In that when we go around here, there's going to be a bit of a gap between the scales. You don't worry about that because that's exactly what the snakes are like. Snakes have this gap between the scales when their body bends. On the outside there's a gap between the scales, on the inside the scales bunch up. So I'm going to make little gaps here now. And here I'm going to make this the belly scales. So just round off those bits there. Make that bend around the body a bit. Here as I get to the edges the scales are flattening out. So I'm doing those sort of ovals a bit on an, an angle. And here they're bunching up, overlapping. And then we've got really skinny scales on the edges. Really skinny. Over it and overlapping scales here. And back to skinny scales along the back bone. Okay, and I'm going to speed up a bit here so you can just like pause it and then catch up. Some people are following along, drawing this as we go, and some people are just like watching and getting some ideas, so those are much just to be watching just to get ideas, so I just speed up bits here and there. 
so you don't get too bored watching a very long video. But maybe you can leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me, do I take do my videos go too long? Do they go too short? I guess my reason for wanting to teach people how to draw snakes is to get people to admire snakes and like snakes. And I think a lot of my viewers do love snakes and they want to express it and so they draw snakes which again is just adding value to the snake and when people see that something is beautiful it's harder for them to destroy it so I would like to think that I am just helping people spread that message you know, extend that belly scale all the way there but let me know in the comments what you think this is a great idea you guys is that what you're doing? learning a few snake techniques so you can draw a snake so you can tell people how beautiful they are or you just want to design something that's cool and awesome and the realistic ones always look even more awesome than the silly pretend cartoony ones love to know what you think just you know leave me a comment good now I've left all these scales pretty big what I'm going to do next is that inside each scale I'm going to do a shape like this. Not all scales, but some of them. And what that is, is if you imagine the side of the scale is like this, and the light shines down here, causing a shadow here around the edge, well, that's what that is. So like I say, not all scars, but quite a few of them, especially in the mid and back section, in this section here, we want to do that too, because it is the roughed, scaled snake. Although, like I said in another video, it's not really rough, it's sort of just smooth little bumps. So it's a smooth snake, doesn't sound as scary or threatening, does it? But the rough, scaled snake sounds all tough and rough should do. Next I'm going to cross over to ink. So I'm going to use this normal drawing nib plus I'm going to use this really fine uh, mapping pen nib. It's just almost like a mapping pen but not quite. It's still a good drawing nib this one. I find mapping pen nibs are too small. This one's super fine without being too small and this one's nice and bold which I like. So here we go. Inking time. Sometimes I use paint brushes too. I'm going to use the bold, bold dense line here. I want that to be the outline, uh, all the scales. Because although we started this one off pretty easy, it's going to get more and more complicated. And some of these lines are a little bit straight. So I might just put a bit of a bend in some of them. And this top scale, I'm going to do that too. Looks like you got a slight frown. So you see where I got a sharp bit there? I can go in and just make sure it's not sharp. And that will go a little bit of a, a little bit of a tip like that. See that? So it wraps around a bit more. Here, see, just take that. I'll probably do it with the um, smaller nib with a lot of it when I retouch them. Around the corner here I'm going to do some of the keels or the bumps so they can stick out a little bit before I actually put the rest of the scale in. Scale. So some places here where it's going to stick out past the scale, see? I don't have to do it to every scale, just a few just to get the idea many snakes this is a highly venomous snake well many snakes in Australia anyway we seem to score the uh, highly venomous things uh, one person's died a few people are being severely envenomated so what we call this is a highly venomous snake to people and an extremely deadly snake to idiots because although yes you play with it it's going to bite you just don't play with it you don't disturb this snake 
It's a fairly peaceful snake. It's shy, keeps to itself like all snakes. Not vicious, not nasty. Just doesn't want to be molested. If you play with it, it will try to bite you. And if it bites you, well, let's just say it bites worse than its bark. I guess if you don't have the nibs, you could always just use fine marker pens, I guess. But if you're sort of a bit more advanced in drawing, you should use nibs and brushes, I think. You know, the traditional tools that have worked for hundreds of years. I'll put a few more scales here. See what I'm going to do here? I'm going to just do... They're almost like fairly straight brackets, slight curves like that. As those scales go around the back. You can even do it again and just get a little bit closer each time. It's a good way of making it have that three-dimensional look. Just like the bricks, I'm just going in between each scale. And adding another line there. Get a shade underneath. So I'm using the nib very, very gentle. And it's always good to have an old cloth to wipe your nibs. Now, the fun part. I'm going to leave a bit of white around the black part of the eye. Just make that black bit stand out. And I'm just sort of sort of stippling. Just using dots. Sometimes I use little dashes. So you see a little light bit around the black in the eye. makes the black really stand out. Now, we're going to put in some details now. First, this mouth here, the top lip is putting a shadow on the bottom lip. I'm just using lines, little strokes. And it's good not to make them too straight. I sort of curve around and they slant there and then they start going straight here. A bit there too. I'm going to very gently put like a bit of a line here, dotted line, and just under that more shading on each scale. It's actually one of the things I enjoy is just very slow, methodical, scale by scale illustration. It's very relaxing. But I may have to speed this up because whereas I'm being very relaxed and cool, people might not have the patience to watch me do all this. But you sort of see how this has got a little bit more of a three dimensional feel to it now, whereas before it was completely flat. That's why it's all about creating the illusion of three dimensions. And I hope that I do it well. Like I said before, see how that comes up sharp? I want to round it a little bit because they're scales. And here, I'm going to put a dotted line going through here. I'm checking here. See here, I'm not bringing it all the way to the edge. Because I want that one to sort of stand out over top of the bottom lip. Here I am doing just a few little random lines, little strokes, little sort of dots, little semi-tiny circles. And it's going to get a bit more near the eye there. I 
and on top. Very sort of dark on top and lighter in the face. So for example this scale here, this top bit's going to be a bit more shade. I'll put a bit of shine here, so very, very gentle. Work out where the shiny bits are going to be. A bit more intense shading up here. So I'm trying to make the stripes look like they go around here. I'm actually marking this one before I do it. So I'm putting detail on every scale. But where there's a stripe I put more detail and even a little bit of cross hatching. Which is unusual for me. And here we have the beautiful rough scaled snake, a good Aussie snake. Thanks for watching the video. I know a lot of you guys love wildlife and you want to express it in a creative way. So I hope this video has given you some hints and some ideas to improve your skills to get your message out there. Until next time, I'll see you later. Oh, and um, that was the uh, other rough scaled snake video if you wanted to have a look at it. Bye.